Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Today's topic is growing microgreens. I'm going to talk about what they are, why you should consider growing them, and then we'll go through the steps so that you can produce your own yummy microgreens. So what are microgreens anyway? Well, these are edible plants that we grow quite closely together and we harvest them when they're really young and at their most nutritious. Research has shown that they are anywhere from four to 40 times more nutritious than the adult form of the same plant. Wow. Now I live in a cold climate. We have a nasty winter every year. And the big thing that I miss is having fresh salad greens. Well, by growing microgreens indoors, I'm able to have those fresh greens whenever I want. And that is fabulous. You can also grow microgreens outdoors, but for me, this works really well to supplement my diet. And this is just a friendly reminder that I have a brand new book coming out, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. I wrote it for all levels of gardeners from beginner to master gardener. This will help you identify both the good bugs and the bad bugs in your garden and provide you with all sorts of methods for dealing with the bad ones using effective organic controls. This is going to be such a great resource. If you pre-order it now, you will receive special bonus content that is not in the book and can't be found anywhere else. It contains my best tips for growing your favorite veggies and a few you might not have thought of growing. All you have to do is order the book from your bookstore or your preferred online source and email me your order confirmation. My email address is susan at susansinthegarden.com. Then I'll send you a link to the bonus content. This is a great deal. Okay, back to growing microgreens. Now to grow microgreens, you really don't need any special equipment. As a matter of fact, if you have started your own plants from seeds before, you probably already have exactly what you need. But I'm going to show you what I use and that will give you some ideas. I start out with a large plastic flat that does not have any holes in the bottom. And then I either place into it a large seed starting flat that has holes in the bottom, or my favorite thing is to use 10 inch square planting flats. And yes, these do have holes in the bottom. And so two of those will fit into here. You don't have to do that, but I like them because then I can grow two completely different kinds of microgreens in the same setup. I purchased these online and you can find them at a couple of different places that I know of. You want to look for 10 inch seedling flats with drainage holes. That's what you would search for. I think I got mine at True Leaf Market. They sell them with or without holes. And in this case, for starting them, I want to have holes in the bottoms. So that's that. I also use a dome cover that is clear to put over the individual flats, or I have a full size one that fits over this whole tray. And that is to increase humidity to help the seeds germinate or sprout. And you'll be amazed at how quickly microgreens germinate. Another thing that I like to use is a pop bottle that has a special little watering tip on it. It's a screw on cap. You can find these really easily and they have different size holes in them. I love these and I get asked a ton of questions about where I got them. So on the web, if you do a search for bottle top waterers, you will find different groups of them. This is a big group we got through Amazon. You can also get them from all sorts of places. And I really recommend them because it's really nice to deliver a fine mist to your seedlings. So that is helpful. And then of course you need seeds and sure you can buy individual packets, but I like to buy them in bulk because as you will see shortly, you plant the seeds very thickly. It goes against all the things we gardeners were taught. So I have different kinds of seeds that I like to start and you can see I've got some Whopper packages here. 
If you do a web search on microgreens seeds, you will find all sorts of sources for them. There are a lot of seed companies that sell them. I got mine from True Leaf Market. I felt like the price was quite good. You know, when you buy in bulk, you do get a much better price. So I definitely recommend them. I've had good luck with them. And there are other companies that sell microgreen seeds. In addition to getting microgreen seeds from online sources, there are also some catalogs that carry lots of different types of microgreen seeds. So what you're looking at here is the Johnny Selected Seeds catalog. And look at the different types of things you can grow as microgreens. So here's arugula, broccoli, cabbage, Chinese cabbage, cress, kale, mizuna, mustard, pak choy, radishes, all different kinds of lettuces and salad greens. So there's a huge variety to choose from and I just wanted to let you know that there are plenty of options for growing microgreens. Another thing that you're going to need is some type of a growing medium to grow the seeds in or on as you'll see in a moment. So this is a germination mix or seed starting mix. I got it at our local garden center and it's a very light fluffy mix. It's sterile and so this is what I like to start my seeds in. However, let me show you something. Last year I experimented with something I had never heard of before. These are jute mats. And this is a sustainable material and you use it in place of seed starting mix. And I thought, I've got to try that. And so what you do is you pre-soak these so they're saturated with water. And then you're just going to sprinkle the seeds on top of this surface once it is in a seedling flat. I only used them a little bit last winter because I got the mats kind of late in the game. But I felt like they started pretty well. And so what I thought I'd do for this video is I'm going to start two flats using the jute mats and two flats using the seed starting mix. And then we can compare them side by side. Now while the jute mats are soaking in our sink, I'm going to pre-moisten some germination mix so that I can fill two flats with it. And when you're pre-moistening something like a seed starting mix or a potting soil, what you're looking for is about the same amount of moisture as you would feel in a wrung out sponge. Okay, I have filled these two flats with about one and a half to two inches of the pre-moistened germination mix. And I also like to pat it down a little bit so that it's fairly compact. I'm going to plant the seeds next. This is a brassica mix that we really like. And you'll be amazed at how closely I plant them together. And that's because you're going to be growing them for a very short period of time. Now I'm not going to cover these seeds. I have found that for microgreens, unless you're growing something that is quite large and kind of hefty like a sunflower or peas, you do not need to cover the seeds. So all I need to do is just water them into the soil a little bit and that's it. So it's very simple. So the next thing is for me to water them in and check out how nice this bottle top water is. Isn't that just slick? Now you're probably wanting some too. Fortunately, they're not very expensive and they really last well. I temporarily set aside the other flat because I want to get going on these jute mats. So those are in the bottom of my little 10 inch square flats and they are very wet. Now I learned something interesting last year when I used these. They dry out quite quickly and I've found that it's really smart to always have just a little bit of water in the very bottom. And what I do is I just put some water into this flat knowing there's no holes in there. Not a lot, maybe like a quarter inch just so it's just touching 
the bottom because the water will come up through the holes of these flats. And that made all the difference. When I didn't realize they were drying out so quickly, I was getting lousy germination and I kept thinking, what is wrong? But that's the secret is to keep them lightly moist by having a little water in the bottom of the container that you're using. Now, because I'm trying to be somewhat scientific about comparing how seeds germinate on the jute mats compared to the germination mix, I'm going to plant the exact same seeds. So this is that brassica mix that I was talking about earlier. And actually, since the jute mat is lighter in color, you can see better how many seeds I'm planting. It's a fair amount. Of course, once the seeds start germinating, I discover that I have a bunch of gaps here and there. <laughs> But this is why you want to buy seeds in bulk because this is quite a lot of seeds that I'm putting in here and you want to have the best deal possible. And I've got a little extra water in the bottom of the tray that these seedling flats are sitting on to keep the mats moist. And I will check them every day. So the next step is to place these clear plastic domes over the flats of seeds. The purpose, you'll recall, is to increase the humidity, which in turn will help the seeds germinate or sprout. Now, I'm putting them under the lights right away, and that's because the ones that I've planted today germinate so quickly, usually within two days. And so, even though I could keep them in the dark until they sprout, I find it much easier to just put them under the lights because it really hasn't made any difference for me at all. If you want to start yours out in the dark, that's perfectly fine. Really, it's whatever you find works best for you. So now we have to wait for something exciting to happen. Okay, it's been about a day and a half since I planted the seeds and you're looking at one of the trays that has a jute mat in it. And look at all of the germination that's going on in here. There's something really important I wanted to point out though. Do you see this white stuff here that looks like a mold perhaps? You might think, oh no, my seeds and seedlings are molding, but they're not. What you're actually looking at is root hairs. That is completely normal and it's not a problem. It's just that ordinarily you wouldn't see those root hairs because they would be under the soil surface. But so far so good. Here's a quick peek at one of the flats that has the seed starting mix in it or germination mix and you can see there's a lot of activity going on in here as well. And you do see a lot of those root hairs but that's perfectly normal. Okay, it's been three days and most of the seeds have germinated so I'm going to go ahead and remove the dome covers. I'll show you a close-up of each one, just a moment. And once these covers are off for good, that's when you really need to keep an eye on the moisture in the trays. Here's one of the trays that has the jute mats in it. And you know, it would be really easy to think that all of these root hairs are like a mold or a fungus. But again, they're only root hairs and there's no cause for alarm. And here's one of the trays that has the germination mix in it. The root hairs are a little bit less noticeable, but they're still there and there's nothing to worry about. Now I'm going to let everything grow for a few more days. Well, it's been a few more days and boy, am I surprised at the results. So this is the flat that had the two trays planted using the seed starting mix or germination mix. These ones have the jute mats in the bottom, so of course they're not on a bed of soil, so these are a little higher, but what a difference. I am extremely disappointed in the jute mats. This is amazing. And you'll recall that I used the same seeds between this flat and this flat so we could do a good comparison. 
I have kept these moist just like I should and I just don't get why there is such a dramatic difference but I am much happier with the results using the seed starting mix. Wow! So moving on from there, what happens next? I'm going to let these grow a little bit more but then I'm going to harvest them and all you need to do is just use like a little scissors or some kind of cutting tool and you're going to trim them off right above the soil surface and then wash them really well using like a salad spinner or a colander but rinse them off well so you don't have any of the potting soil on them and then you can use them in salads and all different kinds of things and I think you'll find that the flavor is fantastic and remember they're going to be really high in nutrients. Now I wanted to go over one other thing. A couple of years ago I did a video on microgreens and I mentioned something that had worked for us at the time and then we developed a problem after I had shot the video and it wasn't something I had anticipated. So I mentioned that what we've done before, because you hate to use a lot of the potting soil, is after I'd harvested everything, I would sort of fork through the roots and replant on top and that worked well so that I didn't have to use brand new soil mix. But then what we would do after we harvested that second crop of microgreens is we would flip over the mat of soil and fork through it again to loosen up all those roots that are in there and we'd plant a third time. Well that third time, even though it would have been nice if it worked well, we started getting some damping off syndrome and what that is is a nasty fungal disease that can kill seedlings. So I'm not going to recommend that third planting of the seeds but something that I probably could have done to prevent this problem would be if I'd had a little fan running to keep the air flowing across the seedlings. So that's something I need to experiment with. But I did want to follow up on that aspect of things if you did see my old microgreens video. Otherwise it's a great video, it's just that we ran into a problem well after I'd shot the video and didn't realize that we might get damping off syndrome. And I've never had problems with damping off syndrome with any seed starting, so it was a bit of a surprise. Okay, well that's everything you need to know about growing microgreens. And remember that you can plant all kinds of seeds to grow microgreens. You know, look for the different options that are available in seed catalogs and online. And also I didn't think to mention that there are a lot of herbs that you can grow as microgreens and think about how concentrated those flavors will be. Yum! So I hope that you will give this a try. It is easy, it's fun, and oh, to have these fresh greens in the dead of winter is awesome. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I'll see you next week. Have fun growing microgreens.